Now it's not just whether it's part of China or not part of China. That's not the, not the question. Uh, it's to do with fundamental freedom. Freedom of, it's not just freedom of expression or freedom to vote. It's freedom to think and freedom from fear. It is a work in progress. Uh, we are experiencing, in, like, basically we are making history day by day. And as long as CCP exists, we cannot have real freedom and democracy. Prime Minister, on Wednesday you signed an agreement with China promising to deliver over 5 million people into a, the hands of a communist dictatorship. Is this morally defensible or is it really true that in international politics the highest form of morality is one's own national interest? I was um, visiting a, a, a mental, a hospital for the mentally ill and I'm walking down the middle and there's a very, very well-dressed Chinese guy who's calling from behind one of these wire fences. Governor Patton, Governor Patton, could you could you come over and talk to uh, talk to me? And then he says, um, I just want to ask you one question, um, Governor. He said, um, uh, Britain says it's the oldest democracy in the world. So I said, mm, yes, it's sometimes claimed. And he said, um, China is the last great communist power in the world, authoritarian power. And I say, yes. And he said, could you understand, could you therefore explain to me how it is that Britain, the democracy, is handing over Hong Kong to uh, an authoritarian power without consulting the people of Hong Kong, without giving them any choice? The first real challenge was Article 23. Uh, Regina Yip at the time was the Secretary of Security, and Article 23 in the Basic Law essentially is about national security. You essentially are giving so much power to the Hong Kong government, and that who can in turn ask for help from mainland to essentially pick anyone they want to be and charge them with treason. And the 2003 movement was more or less, I mean, not so much a student movement, it was a movement from all different groups and all different sectors. And it was a reaction against the, the government's really crude attempts to, to ram Article 23, the Article 23 legislation through the uh, Ledge Co. So that really got people to take to the street. Uh, I believe it was about half a million people, 500,000 people. It was the first time that um, people talked to the street after the hand handover. In 2012, Joshua Wong, who is now a famous you know, international uh, activist and pro-democracy campaigner, he began began his career as a dissident by um, his uh, work with scholarism. And scholarism was the, their original cause was the movement against the so-called patriotic education drive. And the government was trying to install in the curriculum in high schools throughout Hong Kong um, a very, very pro-Beijing narrative. It was more brainwashing than anything. It 
completely ignore many brutal facts that happened in recent Chinese history. I didn't talk about Cultural Revolution at all. Didn't really talk about you know how many people died from the Great Leap Forward and and all that stuff. It's just basically kind of glorified、um, China. When I was 15 years old, Beijing. Introduced the brainwashing education school curriculum, and compared to other policy or other evil bill introduced by Beijing, high school students might be the major stakeholders that might be strongly affected or even being being rushed by the Beijing authorities. And that's the reason for me to fund scholarism. The scholarism movement—that was really a movement which, which was initiated by high school kids, and nobody saw that coming. I mean. And it really was a changing of the guards between the old democracy, you know, people, the the people who were long out of date, you know, like Martin,、uh, Martin Lee and, and and Emily Lau and you know, kind of founders of the old democracy movement. This is really a kind of a changing of the generations compared to some of the politician or lawmakers that graduate from school for a few decades already. I think students should have a say. To decide their own future. From my point of view, it's really important to put more pressure on government, and we wish to let the world to know that if we can achieve our goal by any approved protest, of course, it might be easier. But if the government and the police never respect on our voice, we need to put more pressure and send a clear signal to the government. We represented the silent majority, and we have fellow Hong Kongers stand on our side. He showed. Hong Kong people, that it was pop is possible to mobilize a very large amount of people and not just to march. Every time you march, you're done. You go home and you're kind of like I did something good, and then but then nothing really changed or happened. But、um, that anti-national education campaign was: I'm not just only going to march. I'm going to stay. Right outside the government headquarters, as some kind of a sit-in. The、um, amendment of this policy means that we are giving the authority to the schools,、uh, and this is、uh, very much in line with、uh, our uh, school-based uh, education policy. The schools are given the、um, the authority to decide when and how. They would like to、uh, introduce, implement a moral and national education, and that's essentially the nub of this、uh, announcement. So, when the、uh, scholarism, the young Joshua Wong, is just、uh, not 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 reached the age of 15 at that time,、um, started the、uh, anti-national curriculum movement.、Um, I was act- actually very touched by the young people. Their commitment to Hong Kong and their、um, their insight. One of the side topics that got brought up during that time was、uh, the election of chief executive, which was promised in the Basic Law to be one person, one vote. Subsequently, Benny Tai, who is another、uh, pro democracy activist who has spent time in jail, he began his initiative based on Martin Luther King's teachings to uh, to uh, Disobey to publicly di- disobey the law,、um, in, in in favor of universal suffrage, to elect the chief executive. If we if we cannot take more active uh, uh, action to deal with the situation, then、uh, Hong Kong's democracy will be really in trouble. So therefore, I as a very moderate or even conservative.、Uh, Uh, uh, Democrat at that time, that I、uh, suggest the idea of civil disobedience. So that actually was out of surprise of everyone that a moderate person like me、uh, dared to take that stance. And Benny Tai, Professor Benny Tai's idea was to to have maybe ten or twenty thousand、um, students or young people to sit down in Central to block some of the major roads there for maybe a couple of days, then have them arrested. Taken off to jail and make this as an international statement、uh, in solidarity for、uh, universal suffrage in Hong Kong. We 
we tried to force the government's hand. The government basically turned to central government and said, "You guys make the decision and let us know." And then on、uh, 2014, August 31st, the Communist Party came back and said, "Of all the plan that we had talked about, they chose the one that's more conservative and make it even more conservative." In CCP's mind, one person, one vote mean I pre-select four guys for you, and then you guys can have one person, one vote. That's the essence of it. So basically, all door shut, and、um, and it left no choice but to have some kind of even bigger demonstration. In the run-up to the Occupy Central movement, Joshua Wong and Nathan Law and a few others kind of. In a nice way, hijack the event. All we know that civil disobedience is about how to mobilize and facilitate more Hong Kongers engaged in it, instead of having just、uh, a free day occupy、uh, movement. I think we need to have long period of time to have civil disobedience occupy the street on the road and to、uh, create occupy zone and to let the world to know our demand of free election. For example, in 2012, we have the anti. National Education Movement, which we have occupied the Civic Square for around 10 days. So, how can we imagine to achieve free election by only three days occupy action? Right, you know, very near to here, to where we're standing, in Civic Square, which is where we just were. You, it used to be the place where people were encouraged to come, or people were allowed to come and protest. Now it's all blocked off, as you can see. Civic Square should be the place that originally deserved. Uh, and prove the protest rights of Hong Kongers. People should be freely allowed to gather and enter the civic square to have demonstration. But when Beijing and the Hong Kong government set up the three meters barrier, block us to enter it, we have to reclaim it and climb through the barrier and to prove that people should be the master of their own house. And Joshua Wong really initiated things by climbing over that fence. By that time, it had been fenced off. Getting arrested, and the police keeping him in detention for over 48 hours, was the thing that brought hundreds of thousands of people out on the street, blocking the roads, and that resulted in a tear gas attack on the kids. They were mostly young people at that time, and this brought out a well, you know, a wellspring of sympathy for the movement. It was amazing in the sense that it was very self-disciplined. It was not organized like it's like people don't listen to each other, but it was very disciplined.、Uh, people clean up. People do a lot of things. People help each other.、Um, people 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 figure out how to deal with tear gas and and all that stuff. It's very disciplined. We plan to withdraw at a,、uh, just around a week after the occupy started. And and so we believe that we have already achieved what we want, and so it's better to end the occupation as early as possible, so as to maintain the strength of the movement, the momentum of the movement. But surely the situation、uh, was out of our control, and、um, and the students refused to leave. A lot of young protesters refused to leave, and so we have to stay with them, and and believing that we. And I think that's also our moral duty that we cannot leave them behind.、Um, and but after a month, we decided that、um, uh, we could not allow the situation to continue. So we we uh, uh, end our own occupation. We went back to teach in university, but but still we continue to、uh, have co have our, our communication with the protesters there, the occupiers there. But I think in around mid. November or even earlier, that、uh, we can we see we have seen signs that the movement is get turning violent. Some of the protesters, they are kind of、uh, not following the principle of civil disobedience. So at that time, we still believe that civil disobedience, non-violence,、uh, should be the guiding principle of the movement. When some protesters are kind of using of all. all Not following the,、uh, that principle, so we believe that we should end the movement by by taking、uh, 
another kind of action by surrendering ourselves to the police, hoping that that could end the occupation. After 79 days, uh, the political system remained unchanged. Even we have enhanced the political awareness of Hong Kongers and also let the world to know that how Hong Kong people choose not to kowtow to Beijing. But it seems that we still can't achieve our goal and some of us might feel defeated or depressed. The movement died down completely. All the three locations got cleared out completely and uh, people felt that as if not, nothing really happened. The government and those in power would be able to clear our roads and streets, but they could not win the hearts of Hong Kong people, especially the next two generations. We have resorted to civil disobedience, and we have all said we will take the consequence. So if the consequence is arrest and being charged, we will accept that. The kind of nonviolent civil disobedience that you saw in places like, uh, for example, um, you know, the, the American South or the American experience with Martin Luther King and, and others was is that in the background you had, a, you know, democratic institutions. The idea of people getting arrested for their principles and nonviolently disobeying the law for a, a greater cause, kind of pricked the conscience of America and, uh, and, and to some extent uh, really changed things. And as we all know, it resulted in the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Of course, problems still remain, but regardless, it worked in a democratic context. In Hong Kong, we don't have that at all. And we don't have any conscience whatsoever on the part of the Chinese Communist Party. They massacred kids in Tiananmen Square in 1989, and they wouldn't mind massacring kids again in 2020. So I think that the problem now is we are in a situation in which uh, there is no conscience to appeal to. The movement itself is not the end goal. The end goal is really that they sense in general the, the populace is just not, they don't really understand the importance of it. They need a deep awakening. So Umbrella Revolution had, had that power to awaken a lot of people and then how do you want to live your life? Who got to rule you? Why do we have to listen to government? Like all these questions, like all these political questions that they, they've never really kind of thought about before. So people started to find their, find their own, own answer to why it failed, or people starting to find their own pathway to what to do in order to succeed, right? Uh, and because of that, then we saw the rise of uh, the localist uh, camp right after around 2015. And that's where you know, Baggio and many, uh, many others uh, belong. Localism, this phase in English, I don't think this is a very positive phase. But uh, uh, in Hong Kong, we have a, a very special meaning. Because um, in Hong Kong, we have an identity issue because of historical reason. Before, we are a Britain colonial city, and now uh, we belong to, to Beijing government, but to Hong Kongers, we do not think we are British before, and we do not think we are Chinese indeed now. I think Hong Kongers and Chinese is, is a totally different group of people. I believe that Hong Kongers is a nation, and we have our separate identity, language, currency, and other system, culture. And all this difference makes us stronger and say independent nations. So localists, we uh, propose we should uh, treat ourselves as Hong Kongers and treat all the social problems and also the solutions uh, from Hong Kongers ourselves perspective. We suggest to have more aggressive protests to the government, including the Hong Kong government and the Beijing government. Uh, actually, they, 
we cannot just sit here like umbrella movement is so called so peaceful, but we cannot just sit here and let our people, let other Hong Kongers to suffer, get hurt, get hit, or get shot by the police forces. Civil disobedience may not be the uh, principle uh, guiding the uh, protests anymore. Now, some people like myself will continue to adhere to civil disobedience. But I'm, what I'm saying is that it will be justified for some people to adopt a more radical stance. Hawaii, Lokho, Lang Tinke, say some you. Or Doy Bilge, Mzi Hai Lang Tinke, Yktum Zi Hai Bunman Tin, or Doy Bilge, Hayako Lay Lim. Yan Man, Ningo Hoi Pa Ting Fu, Ting Fu Ningo Hoi Pa Yan Wan. Yan Wai, Ju Kun Joy Man, or the Hong Kong Yan, Sinzi Hai Yat Tou de Ju Yan. Ting Shan Shan Ode. 我哋要光復香港，我哋要引領一場時代嘅革命。各位，我哋要攞翻我哋嘅自由，攞翻一個屬於我哋嘅香港。我哋要掌握我哋嘅命運，我哋唔要再做奴隸，唔要再做奴才。我哋要掀起一場時代嘅革命，時代革命，光復香港，時代革命，時代革命，光復香港。多謝你哋。In Hong Kong, in the、uh, Lunar New Year, and and we will have some different、uh, people come out to to cheer us out something, and and like、uh, night market in Taiwan, and they think this is a, a traditional culture for for Hong Kong, and they want to protect it. And in Year Two One Six, actually, they they want to do the same thing. But、uh, this year is strange. Firstly, some government officers come here, and then some police <laughs> come here as well and try to form a defense line. Initially, after the confrontation with the police, not the physical part, but just hey, why don't you guys just is you know、uh, Chinese New Year? Why don't you just? Let this guy, you know, do the thing. The police actually was cool for, for, for a little moment.、Um, the confrontation came came afterwards. Edward, like we should point out, you you were there, in fact. During yes. These events. At first, we just want to support the hawkers in Portland Street, but we didn't expect that the police would use such a far violence to oppress us. They used pepper spray to the people gathered in Portland Street. They used firearm to the people who insist to stay in Portland Street. That was why the white riot or the conflict started. We have to understand that why did it happen? Is it be was it because of us? No, it was because of the police. The Fishbowl Revolution was truly a lot more of a revolution than the umbrella、uh, as a as a revolution. Personally, I would rather call it umbrella movement and fishbowl revolution. Unfortunately, fishbowl revolution was also at the same time that most people are not ready mentally. They are not ready. They couldn't see, including me, how that could lead to the next step. At the time of the fishbowl revolution, I think we had not gained that kind of understanding, so we make、uh, some. Wrongful condemnation on the on the more radical protesters,、um, saying that they might have、uh, breached some basic principles of protest. But now, I think with hindsight, we we I would say that they might be having a a, a better understanding of the situation than us. <laughs> I come here 
to support Mr. Edward Lam, number six in the list of the next. Edward is an honest young man, blessed by God, and he fought bravely against tyranny of Si Wai Lam in Mong Kok. And he has fought bravely in many actions for the good of Hong Kong people. Some days, Ray Wong and Edward Lung come to find me and say, oh, they may be disqualified by the government. I say, okay, come on, this is not possible. According to our constitution, this is this, your, your uh, right to go for election should be protected. But they say they will. And they asked me to consider to, to replace them to, to run the election. Um, following a, a, a radio interview in which you said, well, you know, you've been advocating a, a policy of independence, but actually you have no plan for it. I should say that independence as a political view should be treated fairly as like the other political views. It should be expressed inside the logical as a political view. We have the freedom of speech to exercise this. But in fact, right now, the government is trying every means they have to do or pass this kind of political view, to manipulate the law, to intervene a pending court case, just to stop this voice being heard inside the Let's Go. But at the end, we know the story. They, they really got uh, uh, disqualified, and then I replaced and run the election. This election is a very important issue. 如果不是我今天不會站在這個台上 those traditional politicians. And after the election when we win it, soon the media, when, when they try to uh, interview me, they were asked, they are not asked about, uh, will, you, will you do something in, in the off-taking session? But what will you add on <laughs> in the, in the uh, off-taking session? I, Sixtus Ban Xiong Hang, would like to declare that as a member of the Legislative Council, I shall pay earnest efforts in keeping God over the interests of the Hong Kong nations. Liang Zhong Hang Yiyuan, you changed the history of the past. You have to do it. You have to do it. You have to do it. Please accept the law that is declared by the law to repeat the law. Otherwise, according to the first rule, 你是不能夠參與立法會會議或者表決,包括一陣的立法會主席選舉。When you were planning on doing it, did you think that you might be disqualified because of it? No. It is like a competition. More more those, those young Turks, they want to making themselves uh, to be uh, more 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 powerful, more more Dramatic thing than the others. I, Sixtus Long Chung Hang, swear by the Almighty God that being a member of the Legislative Council of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region of the People Republic of China. I, Yao Wai Cheng, solemnly, sincerely, and truly declare that and affirm that being a member of the Legislative Council of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region of the People's Republic of China. Well, I started in 2004 and I, I repeated in 2008, I repeated in 2010, I repeated in 2012, so no turning back. Liang Guohong Yiyuan. Thank you.
撤销人大不收建议，我要双补选，人民自主自决，无需中共批准。The disqualification of uh, the legislators was a turning point. Was a turning point. Um, after the umbrella movement, um, we start to see Beijing uh, tightening the control of Hong Kong. But clear signs was the disqualification. People felt that the helplessness. There's no point of voting anyway. Even if I cast my vote, the Chinese government is going to disqualify our legislator. So why vote? We may as well retrieve back to our uh, you know, old lives, you know, make money, make a living, do whatever we can and maybe get out of Hong Kong. I mean, by this point, since he's been in prison for so long, he, he's really reached a stature like a, like a Mandela, like a Nelson Mandela by this point. I mean, I think it's no coincidence that, you know, the real rallying cry is liberate Hong Kong, revolution of our times. All I know is, is that there's a kind of a feeling that uh, he's a political prisoner. He's a, he's a prisoner of conscience. And he's a rallying cry for these individuals. He's, he's like I say, he is a Nelson Mandela figure. Chinese